What's going on, smart people? Today, today's a special day. Today is a very special day. Today, my professor assigned our final classical mechanics homework of the semester. Now, you might be thinking, wow, it doesn't take a lot for you to have a special day. Well, think about it. In undergrad, you have to have your introductory physics course, which is just one big old course on classical mechanics. It's one big course on Newton's laws. Then you have to take an advanced classical mechanics course in undergrad. Then in grad school, you have to take classical mechanics again, even deeper. And then, and then nothing. This is the last classical mechanics homework I will ever have to do for the rest of my life. So, for the final time, Let's talk about what this week's classical mechanics homework will be on. Don't cry. Don't cry. It's a happy time. This week's classical mechanics is all on the Hamiltonian formalism. In a lot of your classical mechanics, you'll spend it with the Lagrangian approach, where you have some generalized coordinate, generalized velocity. You solve the Euler-Lagrange equations of a system and come up with the equations of motion. You can do the same thing for Hamiltonian formalism. They're very similar. They have their differences. For one, instead of generalized coordinate and velocity, the Hamiltonian is represented by some generalized coordinate and some generalized momentum. You might think, what's the difference? Can't I just multiply the velocity by some mass? Not exactly. For example, in electromagnetic theory, you can have some momentum of a charged particle that has to do with its mass and its velocity, but there's also a contribution from the fact that the electromagnetic field exists. The electric field is contributing to the momentum itself. So in general, you can't just multiply by the mass and think that that's the momentum. The Hamiltonian and the Lagrangian all have their benefits. For example, for the Hamiltonian, which is a function of generalized coordinates and generalized momenta, if you have a cyclic coordinate, which means it doesn't show up in the Hamiltonian, well then that also means that the generalized momentum is conserved. So if you have something that's a function of your generalized coordinates and momentum, and you just found out that one doesn't show up and one is just a constant, then that makes your life a whole lot easier. And that really isn't as helpful in the Lagrangian formalism because the momentum being conserved doesn't necessarily mean that the generalized velocity is, so it doesn't really reduce the, the problem as much. Sorry, that was a bit of a tangent, but the problems themselves for the homework are pr almost all straight out of the Goldstein book in chapter 8, and it's kind of what you would expect. It's a lot of find the Hamiltonian, solve Hamilton's equations for this kind of system, for example, for the central force problem or for two springs being connected. One of the problems that does look kind of cool is it's a derivation problem that says to derive something, an equation that's Hamilton-like, where instead of it uh, depending on the generalized coordinate and the momentum, it's the generalized velocity and the generalized momentum, which is different. I never really thought about something like that before, so we'll see how that derivation goes. But yeah, without starting it, it, it seems like this homework is going to be a lot of solve it using the Lagrangian method, then do it the Hamilton way, then show that it's really the same answer that gets you the same physics. There's not too much to say about it. It's, it's sort of problems that we've solved before one way, so we sort of know what to expect and it's just solving it a way that's a little bit different. It's, it's just converting from your velocity to your generalized momentum, at least if you start with the definition of the Lagrangian. What I'm surprised isn't in the homework is uh, what we're going over in class now, which are canonical transformations. And I thought that that's kind of like the more interesting part of classical mechanics. So it's weird that it's not in the homework, but I also still expect it to be on the final. So I don't know what, what's going on with that. But that's sort of about it. It seems like we're ending the semester more or less on the Hamiltonian formalism. There's so much more to classical mechanics than this, but there's only so much you can do in one semester. I definitely have a better appreciation for the class than I did in undergrad. I think undergrad I had kind of a bad taste in my mouth just because it's hard. It's a hard class and I didn't do too well in, in undergrad, but now I feel like I really have a better understanding of what's going on. Uh, I'll probably talk about classical mechanics more once the final gets closer, but this is probably the last time that I will until that point comes. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section if you did. I'll see you tomorrow.